Hello everybody, welcome to this lecture about ultrasound findings of normal and abnormal early pregnancy. Learning Objectives 1. Normal ultrasound findings in first trimester pregnancy. 2. Timeline of normal early pregnancy development. 3. Ultrasound findings of early pregnancy failure. A. Diagnostic findings. B. Suspicious findings. 4. Indicators of poor prognosis in early pregnancy. 5. Pregnancy of unknown location. 1. Normal ultrasound findings in first trimester pregnancy. Gestational age is calculated from the first day of the woman's last menstrual period, but conception occurs after ovulation, about two weeks after the last menstrual period. This accounts for the two-week discrepancy between the clinical and histologic gestational age. A gestational sac can first be visualized at endovaginal ultrasound at 4.5 to 5 weeks of gestational age as a 2 to 3 mm rounded intrauterine fluid collection. Before visualization of a yolk sac or embryo to confirm the fluid collection as a true gestational sac, two signs may be used. One dot the intradecidual sign, defined as an eccentrically located gestational sac within the echogenic decidua with a relatively undisturbed collapsed uterine cavity which visualized as a thin echogenic line, is highly suggestive of an intrauterine pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound image demonstrates the intradecidual sign in a pregnant woman with pelvic pain. 2 mm round gestational sac, arrow, is embedded within the decidua, adjacent to the collapsed endometrial cavity, arrowhead. The mean sac diameter is 2 mm projecting to a gestational age of 4 weeks 4 days. 2. The double sac sign, consisting of two concentric echogenic rings surrounding the fluid collection and separated by a thin crescent of endometrial fluid, is a sign of definitive intrauterine pregnancy. The outer echogenic ring represents the decidua parietalis, and the inner ring represents the decidua capsularis and chorion. The intradecidual sign is visible before the double sac sign because in the intradecidual sign, the gestational sac is not large enough to deform the contour of the uterine cavity, while in the double sac sign, the gestational sac has grown large enough to protrude into the endometrial cavity. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows the double sac sign in a pregnant woman with pelvic cramps. A 4 mm gestational sac is surrounded by two echogenic rings. The inner ring, Arrow, represents the decidua capsularis around the chorion, and the outer ring, arrowhead, represents the decidua parietalis. The mean sac diameter is 3 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 4 weeks 6 days. The ultrasound appearance of early gestational sacs is variable, and while these two signs are highly suggestive of an early intrauterine pregnancy, they will be absent in at least 35% of gestational sacs. So absence of these signs does not exclude an intrauterine pregnancy. A nonspecific, empty, rounded intrauterine fluid collection seen in a pregnant patient has more than 99.5% probability of representing a gestational sac. Because of much higher prevalence of intrauterine pregnancy compared with ectopic pregnancy and the fact that a minority of ectopic pregnancies have small intrauterine fluid collections, a nonspecific fluid collection with a smooth, rounded, or oval contour represents an intrauterine pregnancy until proven otherwise. How to measure mean sac diameter, MSD? Three measurements of the gestational sac, length, depth, and width, are obtained, summed, and then divided by three to determine the MSD. Gestational age, GA, in days, is calculated by adding 30 to the MSD, in millimeters, MSD plus 30 equal GA, in days. This image shows how to correctly measure the length and depth of the gestational sac on a longitudinal section. And this image shows how to correctly measure the width of the gestational sac on an axial section. The yolk sac is the earliest intragestational sac structure to be visualized at ultrasound that can absolutely confirm an intrauterine pregnancy. It is the primary maternal fetal transport system before full development of placental circulation and can be visualized at about 5.5 weeks of gestational age as a round 3 to 5 mm structure, usually eccentrically located within the gestational sac.
In gestational sacs at 5.0 to 5.5 weeks, the yolk sac may sometimes appear as two parallel lines, representing the leading edge in the posterior wall, rather than as a discrete circle. Endovaginal ultrasound images show a normal yolk sac at varying stages of early pregnancy. Here the yolk sac, arrow, is an eccentric round echogenic ring within the gestational sac. The MSD is 12 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 5 weeks 6 days. And here the yolk sac is seen as two parallel lines representing the leading edge and posterior wall within a small gestational sac. The MSD is 4 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 5 weeks 0 days. The embryo is first visible at about 6 weeks of gestational age as a 1 to 2 mm structure at the periphery of the yolk sac. The length of the embryo is measured from the head, crown, to the buttocks, rump, so the term crown rump length, CRL, which is the most accurate measurement of gestational age through the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. The embryo should be visualized when the MSD is at least 25 mm. Endovaginal ultrasound image in a pregnant woman demonstrates the CRL. The embryo has a CRL of 3 mm and is adjacent to a normal yolk sac. The estimated gestational age is 6 weeks 0 days on the basis of the CRL. The embryo resides within the amniotic cavity, and the yolk sac resides within the chorionic cavity. The amniotic membrane is thinner than the yolk sac, and although it is seen more easily after 7 weeks, it can be seen as early as 6.5 weeks of gestational age. Between 6.5 and 10 weeks of gestation, a linear relationship exists between the diameter of the amniotic cavity and the crown rump length. In normal gestation, the chorionic cavity, amniotic cavity, and crown rump length grow proportionally until the onset of fetal urine production at about 10 weeks. The fetal urine disproportionately enlarges the amniotic cavity, which then grows faster than the chorionic cavity, with eventual fusion of the amnion and chorion at 14 to 16 weeks. Endovaginal ultrasound image in a pregnant patient shows normal amnion and embryo morphology. The embryo, seen between the caliper marks, is within a normal thin membrane amnion, arrowhead. The embryonic morphology is distinct with the appearance of the rhombencephalon, seen as the anechoic structure within the head, arrow, and the developing limb buds at the periphery of the embryonic trunk, double-headed arrow. The crown rump length is 17 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 8 weeks 2 days. Cardiac pulsation in the two-paired endocardial heart tubes begins at about the sixth week of gestation, so, it is possible to observe cardiac activity in embryos as small as 1 to 2 mm. However, Absence of cardiac activity in embryos smaller than 4 mm may also be normal. A measurement of 7 mm was established and larger as the crown rump length at which cardiac activity should be present. So, a definitive diagnosis of failed pregnancy may be assigned only if the embryo is at least 7 mm and lacks cardiac activity. The embryonic heart rate accelerates over the first 6 to 8 weeks of gestation with a lower limit of normality near 100 beats per minute at 6.2 weeks of gestation and 120 beats per minute at 6.3 to 7.0 weeks of gestation. Embryonic tachycardia, defined as a heart rate of 135 beats per minute and higher before 6.3 weeks of gestation or 155 beats per minute and higher at 6.3 to 7.0 weeks of gestation, has been shown to have a good prognosis, with a high probability of a normal outcome. Endovaginal mode ultrasound image in a pregnant patient demonstrates normal cardiac activity of 122 beats per minute, BPM. The crown rump length is 3 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 3 days. Endovaginal U.S. images in a pregnant patient with vaginal bleeding and a serum beta HCG level of 5,420 mU per milliliter, 5,420 IU-L show development of cardiac activity. A. Initial image shows a normal yolk sac and a CRL of 2 mm, arrow, projecting to a gestational age of 5 weeks 6 days. No cardiac activity was detected. B. Follow-up image obtained 12 days later shows appropriate interval growth of the embryo, arrow. The CRL is 11 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 7 weeks 3 days. C. 
M mode image shows normal cardiac activity of 150 beats per minute, BPM. A timeline of normal early pregnancy development is listed in the following table. The timing of visualization of early pregnancy landmarks, gestational sac at about 5 weeks of gestation, yolk sac at 5.5 weeks, and embryo at 6 weeks, with variation of plus or minus 0.5 weeks. Embryonic morphology is featureless until 7 to 8 weeks, when the spine can be visualized. At about 8 weeks of gestation, the head curvature can be separated from the body, and the four limb buds become apparent. The rhombencephalon, which is the developing henbrain, is a prominent landmark at 8 to 10 weeks of gestation, appearing as an anechoic round structure within the head. Intrinsic motion of the embryo may be seen at as early as 8 to 8.5 weeks. 3. Ultrasound findings of early pregnancy failure divided into A. Diagnostic findings. B. Suspicious findings. A. Diagnostic findings. 1. Crown rump length, CRL, of greater than or equal to 7 mm and no heartbeat on a transvaginal scan 2. Mean sac diameter, MSD, of greater than or equal to 25 mm and no embryo on a transvaginal scan 3. Absence of embryo with heartbeat greater than or equal to 2 weeks after a scan that showed a gestational sac without a yolk sac. 4. Absence of embryo with heartbeat greater than or equal to 11 days after a scan that showed a gestational sac with a yolk sac. 5. A sac with no embryo in an MSD less than 12 mm on initial scan that fails to double in size on a scan greater than or equal to 14 days later. 6. Sac with no embryo in an MSD greater than or equal to 12 mm on initial scan with no embryo heart activity on a scan greater than or equal to 7 days later. 7. Embryo, irrespective of crown rump length, without cardiac activity on initial scan and on repeat scan greater than or equal to 7 days later. 8. Cessation of the previously documented cardiac activity of embryo, irrespective of crown rump length. 1. Crown rump length, CRL, of greater than or equal to 7 mm and no heartbeat on a transvaginal scan. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows an unviable intrauterine pregnancy. An amorphous embryo, arrowhead, is seen with a crown rump length of 20 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 8 weeks 4 days, but there was no cardiac activity. These findings are consistent with a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy because the crown rump length measures more than 7 mm. An irregular gestational sac contour, arrow, a sign of poor prognosis. 2. Mean sac diameter, MSD, of greater than or equal to 25 mm and no embryo on a transvaginal scan. Endovaginal ultrasound image demonstrates a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy. There is an empty gestational sac with a MSD of 29 mm. Fine linear echogenic debris is noted in the sac, but there is no yolk sac or embryo. The estimated gestational age is 8 weeks 1 day. The findings are in keeping with a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy because the MSD measures more than 25 mm. 3. Absence of embryo with heartbeat greater than or equal to 2 weeks after a scan that showed a gestational sac without a yolk sac. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows initial findings which is suspicious for pregnancy failure but not diagnostic. There is an irregular gestational sac, arrowheads, with MSD of 17 mm, an enlarged empty amnion, arrows, and no embryo or yolk sac. Follow-up image obtained 10 days later shows an unviable intrauterine pregnancy. There is a lack of appropriate interval growth of the gestational sac and no embryo. Note the hydropic changes in the chorionic villi, arrow. The mean sac diameter is 19 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 6 days. 4. Absence of embryo with heartbeat greater than or equal to 11 days after a scan that showed a gestational sac with a yolk sac. Endovaginal ultrasound initial image shows a round gestational sac that contains a yolk sac, arrow, and a possible adjacent embryo. The mean sac diameter is 14 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 1 day. Follow-up image obtained 13 days later shows lack of appropriate growth of the gestational sac, with a mean sac diameter of 16 mm, 
projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 3 days. There is a 4 mm embryo, single arrowhead, within an expanded amnion, arrow. No cardiac activity was detected. A yolk sac is present, double arrowhead. B. Suspicious findings. 1. Crown rump length, CRL, of less than 7 mm and no heartbeat. 2. Mean sac diameter, MSD, of 16 to 24 mm and no embryo. 3. Absence of embryo with heartbeat 7 to 13 days after a scan that showed a gestational sac without a yolk sac. 4. Absence of embryo with heartbeat 7 to 10 days after a scan that showed a gestational sac with a yolk sac. 5. Absence of embryo greater than or equal to 6 weeks after last menstrual period. 6. Absence of embryo when amnion seen adjacent to yolk sac, empty amnion sign. 7. Embryo present with amnion visible around it but no heartbeat, expanded amnion sign. 8. Small gestational sac in relation to the size of the embryo, less than 5 mm difference between mean sac diameter and crown rump length. 9. Enlarged yolk sac, greater than 7 mm. 4. Indicators of poor prognosis in early pregnancy. Gestational sac. Irregular contour, low-lying position. Yolk sac. Calcified, larger than 7 mm. Amnion. Empty, enlarged or expanded. Embryo. Amorphous shape. Cardiac activity. Bradycardia of 85 ppm or less. Chorionic villi. Hydropic change. Subchorionic hemorrhage. Large. Particularly if it encircles at least two thirds of gestational sac circumference. Endovaginal ultrasound image demonstrates an empty amnion, a sign of poor prognosis. An empty amnion, arrow, is seen adjacent to a normal yolk sac, arrowhead. The mean sac diameter is 2.2, projecting to an estimated gestational age of 7 weeks 2 days. An embryo should be present within the amnion in a normal intrauterine pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows an enlarged yolk sac, a sign of poor prognosis. An enlarged 7 mm yolk sac, arrow, is seen within an irregular gestational sac with a mean sac diameter of 10 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 5 weeks 5 days, and contains no embryo. Findings are suspicious for pregnancy failure but are not diagnostic. Endovaginal ultrasound images demonstrate small gestational sac size relative to crown rump length, a sign of poor prognosis. A. Initial image shows a gestational sac with mean sac diameter of 14 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 1 day. The sac contains an embryo with a crown rump length of 11 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 7 weeks 3 days. The difference between the mean sac diameter and crown rump length is less than 5 mm. A sign of poor prognosis. B. M mode image shows regular cardiac activity of 160 beats per minute. Despite the presence of cardiac activity, the findings are suspicious for pregnancy failure but are not diagnostic. C. Follow up M mode image obtained two days later for vaginal bleeding shows an amorphous embryo, with a CRL of 16 mm, without cardiac activity in keeping with a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows a calcified yolk sac, arrow, which is a sign of poor prognosis. There is also an enlarged amnion, arrowheads. The CRL, not shown, was 20 mm, projecting to an estimated gestational age of 8 weeks 5 days, and no cardiac activity was seen, findings consistent with a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows an expanded amnion, which is a sign of poor prognosis. The expanded amnion, arrows, surrounds a 5 mm embryo that lacked cardiac activity on M mode images. Note the adjacent yolk sac, arrowhead. The mean sac diameter is 14 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 6 weeks 1 day. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows a large subchorionic hemorrhage. A large hypoechoic collection, arrows, separates the chorion from the echogenic decidua and encircles almost one half of the circumference of the gestational sac. Endovaginal ultrasound image shows a chorionic bump. 
There is a focal echogenic convexity bulging from the echogenic choreodecidual reaction, arrow, into the gestational sac. An amorphous embryo with a crown rump length of 20 mm, projecting to an estimated gestational age of 8 weeks 4 days, was shown to lack cardiac activity, in keeping with a non-viable intrauterine pregnancy. 5. Pregnancy of unknown location. Pregnancy of unknown location is the term given to the transient state of early pregnancy during which no definite up is visualized at ultrasound and the adnexa are normal, in other words, a normal pelvic ultrasound finding. At this stage, the three main possibilities include early intrauterine pregnancy, occult ectopic pregnancy, and completed spontaneous abortion. Unfortunately, a single beta HCG serum level does not allow reliable differentiation among these possibilities. In a patient who is hemodynamically stable and has a pregnancy of unknown location, it is less harmful to wait, follow the beta HCG levels, and repeat the ultrasound examination than to presumptively treat an ectopic pregnancy. Endovaginal ultrasound images in a pregnant woman show a pregnancy of unknown location, with an intrauterine pregnancy seen at follow up ultrasound. A. At initial ultrasound, the patient had a beta HCG level of 334 meters IU per milliliter, 334 IU/L, and demonstrated a normal endometrium, no intrauterine fluid collection, and normal adnexa, essentially normal pelvic ultrasound findings. The differential diagnosis was early intrauterine pregnancy, occult ectopic pregnancy, or completed spontaneous abortion. B. Follow-up image obtained seven days later shows a rounded intrauterine fluid collection with intradecidual and double sac signs, findings that confirm intrauterine pregnancy. The mean sac diameter is 6 mm, projecting to a gestational age of 5 weeks one day. The beta HCG level increased to 4,410 m IU per milliliter, 4,410 IU/L. Endovaginal ultrasound images in a pregnant woman with vaginal bleeding in a beta HCG level of 24,670 meters IU per milliliter, 24,670 IU/L, show a pregnancy of unknown location, with findings favoring abortion in progress. A. Image shows a retroverted uterus with an expanded uterine cavity, arrows, due to heterogeneous echogenic material that represents blood products. No gestational sac is identified. The adnexa are normal, with no blood seen in the pelvis. B. Color Doppler ultrasound image shows focal trophoblastic flow at the endometrial, myometrial junction, arrow, a finding that suggests the pregnancy implantation site. Transverse endovaginal ultrasound image in a woman with a beta HCG level of 20 meters IU per milliliter, 20 IU slash L, shows decidual cysts which appear as numerous 1 to 2 mm anechoic cysts, arrows, within the decidua. Endovaginal ultrasound image in a pregnant patient with right lower quadrant pain demonstrates a pregnancy of unknown location with an indeterminate intrauterine collection. The patient's beta HCG level was 287 meters IU per milliliter, 287 IU L. There is an irregular intrauterine anechoic fluid collection within the lower endometrium without the intradecidual or double sac signs. The adnexa were normal. The constellation of findings is consistent with pregnancy of unknown location. The patient experienced a spontaneous abortion, and the beta HCG level decreased to 29 meters IU per milliliter, 29 IU slash L. Endovaginal ultrasound images in a problematic case demonstrate potential intrauterine pregnancy and blood in the pelvis in a pregnant woman with acute left pelvic pain and a beta HCG level of 621 meters IU per milliliter, 621 IU L. A. Image shows a round 2 mm sac with an echogenic rim, arrow, within the decidua, intradecidual sign, which is highly likely to be an intrauterine pregnancy. The mean sac diameter is 2 mm projecting to a gestational age of 4 weeks 3 days. B. Image shows an enlarged 7 times 5 times 5 cm left ovary, between the caliper marks, that contains an echogenic area, arrow, suspicious for hemorrhage. Note the follicles in the left ovary, arrowheads. C. Image shows a small to moderate amount of complex free fluid, arrow, 
in the pelvis, a finding that represents blood. The differential diagnosis was early intrauterine pregnancy with ruptured left ovarian cyst, heterotopic pregnancy, or ovarian torsion. The patient required surgery because of pain. A normal left fallopian tube was found, as well as the ruptured left hemorrhagic corpus luteal cyst with adjacent blood, which was evacuated in the operating room. We come to the end of this lecture. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos. Goodbye. See you soon.